Alrighty, so you guys really like the wheel of overall rebuild. So decide what we're going to do is a wheel of potential. This time it's just based on a player's potential. So what you're going to see on the wheel is mostly C potential. There's also going to be two B's, two D's, and only one A. So the odds are most likely going to be a C potential player, which makes it difficult because they don't have a lot of trade value. But I think it's going to be a good challenge and it'll be a lot of fun. So again, guys, if you guys want to see some more Wheel of Rebuilds where we do different types of, I don't know, leagues, teams, things like that, players, whatever it is, you got some sort of idea to put onto a wheel, let me know in the comment section down below. And let's uh, let's just get into this one. You guys know the deal. Like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you guys need any tickets to any sort of sporting event, concert, and things like that, go to SeatGeek, use the code ANTORTEES, and get $20 off. Other than that, guys, let's show you the wheel. So like I said, there's a bunch of different potentials on it, A through D, basically. I don't really know too many F potential players, so I wasn't sure to put it on there, just because really the only F potential players I know are like created players that people put F potential on. So I just stuck to A through D, and I think it's still going to be a lot of fun. So with that being said, we might as well just hop into it and see what we're going to get for our starting pitcher i guess let's just see what we get for the starting pitcher c potential as i've kind of figured that would happen all right we're gonna go to our closer if you guys missed the last video basically what i did was starting closer and then every single position player so we got a b potential for a closer i will take that 100 that's pretty solid next up we're gonna move to catcher i think catcher is gonna be a good one i'm looking over here because that's where i got the wheel and the catcher is c potential could be worse i guess there's a lot of catchers with c potential first base now let's see what we can get another c potential yikes we're not getting the best of luck here what are we going to get for second base? Please give me a B potential for second base. Can we sneak it in? Come on, we can't. So C potential once again. This one's getting a little bad. Uh, third base now. We actually get B potential for third base, which is pretty good. I like that. Shortstop, as we head to the shortstop, I would really like a good potential shortstop. Perfect. B potential indeed. Let's move to left field. Left field. I mean, I know some C potential left fielders that are pretty good. So I think we'll be okay with the C potential Cent or we're going to go right field this time and then we'll finish with center field. So right field, what are we going to get? We should have gone center field instead, but right field, we're going to get B potential and then center field. I would really like B or A for this one. This is the one I really need a good potential and we actually sneak it out and we get a B potential one. So that's the starting pitcher, the closing pitcher. Um, what we'll do is we'll do a bench bat. I feel like a bench bat could be useful as long as it's not a D potential player and it's going to be C. So, I mean, it's not terrible. And, um, what I'll do to finish out the roster is I'll just put a bunch of C potential players. So we don't really have anybody with trade value and that'll be our 25 man roster. So a lot of C's, a couple B's stuck in there, but for the most part, it's going to be difficult to find some good trades. So hopefully we can come up with something and I'll show you guys the roster in a sec. Alrighty, so I got the team all sorted out. It took a little bit because I was trying to search for players based on potential and it doesn't really work well. So I literally had to search through each single team trying to figure out what player I wanted to use. So let's get into it. Let me show you the settings show you what we're rocking with everything um is going to be actually gm contracts on so we're gonna have that three year window to try to turn this team around you guys can see no ignore budgets no forced trades let's get into it all right so i had to get my list back up to make sure all my potentials were correct so this is our our lineup um you guys can see jonathan vr was second base we had a c potential player um center field was Catel Marte. we had a b potential player shortstop was b potential player you guys can see what we're working with here. Everyone's got a morale boost based on the fact that they're starting. First base, we had C potential, Jesus Aguilar. Third base, I don't think we've ever gone for Eduardo Escobar. We had a B potential player, and I thought he looked really good. Let's give him a shot. I almost went with Eugenio Suarez, but I thought Eduardo Escobar was a little bit better. We decided to go with the Royals, so I thought, you know what? Right field, we have a B potential player. Why not go with Jorge Soler? He's tearing it up right now in real life. First, or our bench bat was Justin Smoke. So, 
It was a C potential player, so that's what I went with there. Left field was C potential. We went with Avisael Garcia. And then catcher, we had a C potential player. We went with Travis Darno. Every one of our bench bats are C potential just because that was kind of like the middle range. And I figured, why not go for them? I've seen these guys do very well in a sim style franchise, especially as bench players. And Billy McKinney is kind of a glitch. He actually develops uh, pretty quickly. Normally, we'll see what happens this time. So pitching wise, um, our starting pitcher uh, that I actually wanted to start with was Jeremy Hellickson because for some reason he's really good in sim style franchise. But you guys can see the rest of our pitchers as well are all C potential. No one is better than C potential. Um, I don't know why I really went with these guys. Kenta Maeda is kind of just well-rounded. Garrett Richards, kind of the same thing. And Matthew Boyd, it's, it's kind of, I just went for well-rounded starting pitchers with C potential. Um, our long reliever is Zach Godley, Scott Oberg. We got David Hernandez, but as you guys can kind of see him, see, I kind of continued with the well-rounded um, closers, relievers, and stuff like that. Trevor Gott, Jake Diekman, and then our closer, we had B potential, which was I was kind of happy about, and we went with Felipe Vasquez, who I thought, I don't think, I think we've gotten him once. So I figured, you know what, let's try him out, see what happens. I'm actually going to swap Diekman and Blyer just because for some reason Blyer is a little bit better for the most part. So this is the team. What I normally do is I just sim the first season and then season two and season three is when we start really making the changes. Again, guys, we stayed within budget for lunch, which is really nice. So with that being said, let's see how season one plays out. I, I think we're a pretty solid team. The pitching is actually probably one of the stronger bullpens that we've had. And then starting pitching, I think we're going to have a little bit of an issue. And then when you look at our lineup, I feel like this is a pretty strong lineup. A um, lot of power, some speed as well with VR and Marte up top. I kind of like it. Let's see what we can do for season one. All right. So I think we made too good of a team. Uh, 94 and 68. So we're taking on the Yankees in the division series. And um, I wasn't expecting 94 wins. Like, I knew the team was decent, but 94 wins? I was thinking maybe, like, you know, competing, like, with the Indians, maybe getting second place, maybe pushing for a wild card spot, but not, not this good. I mean, when you look at, look at this, we're 13th. Like, we're not an amazing team, but I guess I just picked the glitchy players in a sim style franchise. So, when we look at um league leaders jonathan vr had the most stolen bases and felipe vasquez had the most saves which is interesting because normally when i see felipe vasquez in franchise he actually struggles he usually has like a four or five era so that's why i was kind of like maybe he'll do well for once delivery man of the year felipe vasquez so you guys can kind of see mvp was mike trout and acuna when we look at Sion, kershaw and garrett cole Batting title went to Ben Zobrist and Mike Trout. Reliever of the year, Felipe Vasquez and Kenley Jansen. And then rookie of the year, Austin Riley and Michael Chavis. So I'm interested to see how things went. So Matthew Boyd actually pitched pretty well. Um, that's like a first. Kenta Maeda, not so much. He struggled a little bit. Um, Garrett Richards struggled a little bit as well. Jeremy Hellickson struggled. And Mike Fires actually did pretty solid. So I'm actually going to make him our... Our number two and then we're gonna put we're gonna we're gonna rock like this see how things go Zach Godley was okay not terrible um pretty kind of rough it was kind of rough Scott Oberg was okay David Hernandez okay Jake Diekman struggled a bit um Trevor got meh you know Richard Blyer and Felipe Vasquez really held down the bullpen so we're actually just gonna let those two be the the setup and closer right there like Richard Blyer, for some reason in a sim style franchise, is the guy to go to as a lefty. And then Felipe Vasquez, I think this is the best I've ever seen him pitch. Um, one blown save. What? 0.65 ERA and a 0.8 whip. Oh man, that is nuts. Um, let's take a look at our bench. Kevin Pillar did okay, you know, 250 average. Um, on base percentage at 320. It's not terrible. Josh Fagley a little bit less. Um, Billy McKinney is developing quickly. I think he went up five overall this year. And then Miguel Rojas was not terrible either. When we look at our bench, or not or our starting lineup, Jonathan VR, 258. Eh, you know, Cattell Marte was much better. His potential's on a downward trend, but I feel like he's doing just fine. Jorge Polanco's doing pretty well. Pretty good numbers, 33 doubles. 
Jesus Aguilar, 40 home runs, 103 RBIs. I will take that for sure. Eduardo Escobar, 260, but 34 doubles, 27 home runs, and 102 RBIs. I, yeah, that's that's fine. You know, 267, I'll be fine with that. 270 for Jorge Soler. He hit 27 home runs. Okay. All right. That's cool. Justin Smoke did pretty well. 24 home runs, 14 doubles, 280 average. Yeah, that's not bad. Avisel Garcia struggled a bit. Um, he'll probably be a player I look to replace. Could even use Billy McKinney, to be honest. Um, and then Travis Darno. How did he do? 227. Eh. Eh, it's it's not great. Probably could even use Josh Fagley. They're basically replaced like similar. I also realized we have a lot of switch hitters in this lineup. Holy cow. That might have helped us out a little bit. So that's the team. Let's just go into it, see how we do against these Yankees. And um, this is the the uh, elimination game. Since it is season one, I kind of see how the team does. We'll hop into quick manage. Do I want Kenta Maeda to go in? I guess we could. What I'll do is I'll move myself because you guys always complain about me being in the way of the stamina. There we go. And then let's just let's just kind of quickly go through it. As you guys can see, they've added a Ledmus Diaz. That's a new addition. But outside of that, it's a pretty standard Yankees team to score. There would have been huge bases loaded. No outs. Luke Voigt Grand Slam. What a surprise. Kenta Maeda, you really let me down throughout the year. And his contract, I think, runs for like five years. So he's probably a player I don't want to keep on to. So there we go. We at least get one back. Could we get a couple more? No, but Kenta Maeda is done. We'll just go Zach Godley. Hopefully he can kind of keep things calm for at least a couple innings. If we could score, that would be huge. Um, but it's it's not looking like it. So that was Godley's last inning, regardless of what happens. And I think this might be this might be it for us. As our season winds down, we only have one more, one more half inning. Can we do it? We cannot. Oh, maybe. Nope. We get we get knocked out thanks to a grand slam by Luke Voigt and a pretty good outing by Masahiro Tanaka as well. So, what we'll do is we'll just we'll sim to the off season, see what happens. Red Sox defeat the Dodgers. Okay. Any any retirements from our side? No one that we used just keep moving forward exclusive negotiations um we have quite a few um garcia no travis star no maybe probably not though justin smoke we'll do we'll do another season for justin smoke um four million i'm pretty cool with david hernandez he wasn't terrible so maybe another one year deal um 4.5 is cool and then Jeremy Hellickson, he'll be kind of like a, uh, if we need him, we'll bring him back type situation. So moving forward, let's keep uh, going to free agency. 40 man, nothing. Arbitration, we might as well offer it to everybody that we can um, just to bring them back. Just because when we make trades, I'm not trading any of the farm system. I'm only trading the um, MLB roster. So we'll sign everybody back as well. All right, we're going to trade for Julius Chassin instead of Kenta Maeda. Um, Pretty similar contract, but this one's a one-year compared to a multiple-year deal. Kenta Maeda struggle. Julius Chassin, pretty similar stats. We'll see if he does a little bit better. Alrighty, for season two, not much changed. Um, we made we made a couple off-season moves, but um, obviously the trade. Um, I don't know why it says Miguel Rojas trade. He was part of the team from day one. But um, Jimmy Nelson, we uh, added him. For a long relief spot, we're just going to move Godly from the long relief spot into the middle relief. Zach Wheeler was a free agent. Teoscar Hernandez, we signed him to a, a small contract. Zach Wheeler, um, kind of a bigger contract, but we'll see how he does. Teoscar Hernandez is replacing Kevin Pilar. Um, is actually $2 million less than what Pilar was making, so I'm cool with that. Nicholas Castellanos, we moved him from right to left. You guys can see his deal is a two-year deal. And then that's, that's really about it for free agency. So you guys can kind of check out the lineup. Um, three switch hitters to start off the game. And then we got a couple righties, a couple switch hitters, and then a couple righties again. Um, I don't think it's that. I think it's actually a really strong lineup. Offensively, very scary. Lots of pop, especially that three, four, or no, that four, five, six spot. Just pure power, like crazy amount of power. And then when you look at the starting rotation, um, Zach Wheeler makes it look a lot stronger. 
We'll see how Julius Chassin does. We'll see how these two do. I think this is his last year of his deal. He's got one more, I think. Or no, we got two players on the last year of the deal. So that opens up a lot if things don't go well. And we could always sign someone new or just trade them and try to get somebody else. But for the most part, I'm just going to see how it does with these offseason additions. Um, I, I don't think we're that bad of a team. I think, again, we're another playoff team. And with those offseason additions, I think it's a really strong team. So let's see how it goes, and I'll catch you guys at the end of Season 2. All right, so I lied. Kept, uh, Jonathan Villar, he's he's a decent player, don't get me wrong. Morale-wise, we can't get him into that top of the lineup, so he's going to complain about not being a star in the lineup. Otherwise, I don't mind him. Contract, he will become a free agent at the end of the year. And for a player who hit 258, I feel like we could get a a better second baseman who gets on base at a little bit of the same rate maybe a little bit better in Luis Ranifo I also looked at David Fletcher who similar contract a little bit harder to get um there was also somebody else maybe I looked at Isan Diaz we're like millimeters away from the trade bar and I mean you look at his stats too they're not bad. There's a couple other options out there we could always go for. I'm thinking we're going to go Luis Renifo. We've never had him before in a in a franchise. Let's just give it a go. All right, so we almost didn't make the playoffs. We made it as a wild card team. And I mean, I'm going to show you what happened because this was insane. So you guys can kind of like look through it. April, kind of a rough month, probably about 500. May, again, probably about 500 june still probably about sitting 500 and we actually were heading into the all-star break we were maybe like two games above 500 and then when you look at august we start to like all of a sudden boom something like woke up the team and just craziness ensued even september as well definitely a very strong push towards the end of the year so it's looking like we may have to make some crazy changes to the team to really make the playoffs come next season so we're actually 18th in the league i'll actually show you that guys right now 18th so we actually got worse um but we were 95 and 67 um we made it by six games in the wild card so i guess we didn't really squeak by but we definitely had you know a rougher time than it was last year so jorge polanco had the best batting average in the league and when you look at awards he got a silver slugger bregman was the mvp along with charlie blackman okay that's a new one haven't seen that happen same with bregman haven't seen him do that garrett cole back-to-back -back mvps uh patrick corbin got or no garrett cole cy young with patrick corbin and then um we'll take a look at rookie of the year isan diaz thought about getting him but we'll see and then nate low of now the rangers so let's take a look at the team so something went a little askew here so zach wheeler lights out really solid season matthew boyd again not a bad year actually a little bit better than last year julius chassin struggled um garrett richard struggled and mike fires wasn't too bad so these two struggled a bit mike fires was actually pretty solid a 339 era competes with you know wheeler and boyd so pretty good jimmy nelson struggled Oberg struggled, Godley struggled, Hernandez wasn't too bad, Blyer got, and Felipe Vasquez all were very good. So it's kind of like this little section right here, um, or actually just these three kind of struggled. Um, but the bullpen wasn't terrible. So again, I mean, yeah, we did have some pieces that did struggle throughout the year, but I'm not too sure where exactly we're doing too poorly. Um, Billy McKinney and Rojas struggled a bit, but Cattell Marte, very good year. Um, almost 300 very comparable to last year he did add some more doubles and triples but I, I don't see why he you know where's where, why are we losing so many games Jorge Polanco even better than last year Eduardo Escobar very comparable to last year not as many doubles but still very good Nicholas Castellanos 38 home runs 98 RBIs 32 doubles it's just what he does average wasn't there but he still had really good run production same with Jesus Aguilar again very good Jorge Soler very comparable to last year average went down but still good run production Luis Renifo not as good as last year but um we'll see how he does continuing going forward he had B potential opposed to C potential so he should develop um Justin Smoke not terrible and Travis Darno did a little bit better than last year so overall I still feel like we're a very strong team and I guess I shouldn't knock the team we did we did win 95 games which is definitely one of the better records in baseball when you look at how the other teams perform so let's see how we do we have to take on the yankees in the 
the wild card. We all know how that happened or what happened last year. We'll let Zach Wheeler take the mound. I'll move myself out of the way for you guys. Boom. Look at that. And then uh, let's just keep going. Let's let's see how this goes. One nothing. Not a good start. Three nothing. Uh, okay. Uh, set. What? Six? What happened? You're doing s seven now. This is worse than what Kenta Maeda did to us. Oh, man. This is rough. Zach Wheeler. What's going on, bud? All right. Your, your, your day's done. Jimmy Nelson. Just let's make things worse. Eight to two. I mean, this is this is killing me. If we go through some like crazy like, it's I mean it's 92. If we somehow come back, I'd be very surprised. But it's just the Yankees are just our kryptonite. You know, it's just it's just not the team. I don't know why I still have Jimmy Nelson in. I mean, regardless, it was seven to nothing in the first. Are we gonna come back? I don't think so. I mean. It just, it wasn't meant to be regardless of who I kept in. And a lot of you guys in the comment section get so mad about how I don't pay attention to my pitchers and quick manage. It didn't matter who I had on the mound that day. We lost. It was seven to nothing by the second inning. We only scored four runs. Game over. So, um, that's that. Off season time. Um, yeah, that's, that was a rough one. That was worse than last year, which is kind of hard to think about. So, let's take a look. Retired players, no one we were using. Um, so let's keep going. Exclusive negotiations. Probably nobody, to be honest. Um, they're all aging players who... Um, Nicholas Castellanos declined his option. Kind of a bummer, actually. Um, but we might be able to re-sign him. He was actually a good run, like, run producer. Um, Arbitration-wise... I feel like Matthew Boyd's still really good for us. Jesus Aguilar's been really good for us. Solaire, I mean, Oberg, probably not Oberg, but we'll give the, probably not Jimmy Nelson either. Um, contracts, we'll probably give everybody else the contract. All right, to start season three, we traded, or we signed Tanner Roark. But the more I'm looking at him, I'm like, eh, I don't really like him. Um, there really weren't too many good starting pitchers available that I wanted to pay. Trevor Bauer's just too hit or miss. So we're gonna go for Marco Gonzalez. He actually had a, a decent like two seasons. So I figured let's trade him and Billy McKinney and let's see what happens. All right, so let's uh, take a look at roster history so you guys can kind of see what happened. So Jose Urquidy is gonna be our long reliever. We'll see how he does. Um, Josh Reddick, we just signed out of free agency. Um, last couple seasons has been pretty de decent. He's gonna be a bench bat for us, kind of like a, a lefty bat for us uh, Jacob Barnes we took him in the rule 5 draft Wilmer Flores we signed him in free agency Merrill Kelly we signed in free agency and then obviously Marco Gonzalez we just um, traded for that's the word I'm looking for <laughs> Liam Hendricks is another arm we signed in free agency along with Kirby Yates and Sonny Gray those are kind of the names that we've added to the team so let's take a look at pitching you got Wheeler Boyd Sonny Gray Marco Gonzalez and Merrill Kelly it's, it's pretty comparable to what we've had the last few years. So I think we're still going to do about the same. You know, these two will give us a low three. And then the rest will kind of give us high threes, low fours. Um, bullpen is pretty strong. This is a good area to have, like, really good setups to the closer. Our middle is, the middle relief is very comparable to what we've already had. And then the long reliever, Orkidi, could be a little bit of a glitch. Who knows? Uh, I've never used him in Sim style franchise. The lineup, not much has changed. Renifo, I'm hoping he hits the ball well. With that good vision and discipline, I'm expecting more of a 2019 season compared to a 2020 season. Josh Reddick is our DH versus righties. Should be very solid. Um, and then the rest of the team is just is nutty. Like, we brought back Nicholas Castellanos. So that should be good. Wilmer Flores is a decent bench bat. We've, we've got the bats. The pitching looks very comparable to what we've had. The free agency was actually pretty trash compared to normal um, throughout this entire rebuild. So let's see what we can do um, in season three. All right, so when you see this, it's gonna blow your mind. It blew my mind because I don't I don't really know what happened. 108 wins, 54 losses. Um, because I want to show you how we started this season. Because I I hit I hit sim. I walked away. I grabbed some water and I came back and look at this. Look at all this green. 
Look at all these wins. And then it kind of trickled into here. We were 30 and 7 to start the season. 30 and 7. So obviously we lost some games since, but still 30 and 7. Absolutely insane. So we're actually ranked pretty low as well, 17th. So I think it just comes down to having glitchy players in franchise because you can have the best team, but something just doesn't click, right? So we're not even, we're in the middle of the MLB in terms of rank and we're still the best team based on the record in MLB. So we had the most uh, runs and then Sonny Gray had the best winning percentage. Felipe Vasquez had the most saves and Matthew Boyd had the best war. We didn't even get any awards. When you look at the awards, Joey Gallo, another MVP for him. Um, I think we had one in a, a last video. Josh Bell got an MVP. So we're getting some MVPs we don't normally see. Cy Young, Ross Stripling, okay. Luis Severino, and then um, Vlad Jr. had the batting title, reliever of the year. You guys can kind of see who got that. And then rookie of the year, those guys there. So let's take a look because something obviously clicked. Zach Wheeler, phenomenal season. Matthew Boyd, holy cow. How is this not a Cy Young year? 237 ERA, 120 whip, 228 strikeouts. I need to see who won. I know it was Ross Stripling, but, or no, it's actually going to be Severino. I don't know. I don't know. I think I would have given it to uh, Matthew Boyd. I would have given it to Matthew Boyd. Sonny Gray had a great, great year. Uh, 16 and 3 on the year, good ERA. Marco Gonzalez, that was a good pickup for us. And even Merrill Kelly as a fifth starter with a 4-6 ERA. I'm not going to freak out about that. Jose Urquidy, definitely solid. Who would have thought this guy with stats like this would have given us a sub-4 ERA and a close to a 1.3 whip? Like, okay. Trevor Gott had his worst season. It was going to happen. Jacob Barnes struggled. Richard Blyer continues to be a lefty that is a glitch in a Sim-style franchise. It's just a must pickup. Kirby Yates did well. Liam Hendricks did well. And then Felipe Vasquez again just very consistent that's like the first time i've ever seen that happen for felipe vasquez looking at the lineup we'll take a look at the bench first um miguel rojas did well wilmer flores kind of struggled a bit but really just miggy rojas could tell Marte probably had his his best power year 35 home runs 41 doubles 87 rbis i mean it's just high 200s average good on base percentage gotta love it jorge polanco is only getting better i mean just gross numbers really good on base percentage really good ops nicholas castellanos 29 home runs 110 rbis 32 doubles pretty sim similar to last year jesus aguilar 32 home runs almost 100 rbis i mean he's been really good for us as well Soler had his best year in terms of average on base percentage slugging and ops power numbers down a little bit but good amount of doubles so again really good i mean i think we just found a really glitchy team where just they just sim very very well um, good amount of doubles, good amount of home runs, good amount of RBIs. It's kind of a similar theme. Um, Luis Ranifo, better, better. Definitely can accept that. Josh Reddick, oh my God. What are those numbers? And he's 34. Okay, Travis Darno, pretty good, pretty good. I'll take that for sure. He, uh, he split a lot of time with Josh Fagley, so I might just actually have um, Travis Darno start because it looks like he had the better of the years. So again, <laughs> just a really good team, really glitchy, taking on Cleveland. So let's see what happens here. Um, we're most likely gonna be eliminated. That's just the way things are. So let's just kind of quickly go through it. Um, we gotta have Zach Wheeler take the mound. They have Biggio, I see that already, which is a little unreal. I don't know how they got Biggio, but they have Biggio, Lindor, Reyes, Puig. Um, I'm assuming that's Christian Walker, formerly of the Diamondbacks, but let's just get a good outing for once. Like, at least let's make it past one round of the playoffs. Let's get something going, right? There we go. Ketel Marte helps us out. Boom. So, 1-0. That's, that's about it so far. Um, if we could just get maybe, like, a couple more. So, since we're tied right now, a couple more runs would be nice. Um... All right, we get out of that. I'm aiming for seven from Wheeler, but if things get out of hand, we definitely will take him out like right now. And we're going to go to, in the seventh, we'll go to Yates. Really? Kevin Plowecki goes deep on Kirby Yates, and then he, three home runs in a row. Three home runs in a row. I mean, what, 
it's Kirby Yates. He had a low three, high two ERA throughout the entire year. And then what goes and happens? Home run, home run, home run. There's nothing like I don't understand what I could have done differently there. Maybe taking him out after the second home run? Like, oh man, how? And, and I, I think that just comes down, and there's another home run. That's game. Um, unfortunate. That sucks because offensively, I think we're a lot better team than just a one run game. Um, like, we won this game, we won this game, we lost these two. A little disappointing. Um, scored four runs in both. And then obviously seven there. So it, it was the pitching that kind of let us down. But that last game was rough. Um, Solaire struggled. Aguilar struggled. But I mean, for the most part, I mean, the bottom of the lineup kind of struggled a little bit too. But again, I like the team. Not much money has been put into the team. You still got money to play with. You got some players coming or like going into free agency. I mean, who would have thought? Who would have thought a team mostly comprised of C potentials to start would have turned into a team that made the playoffs all three seasons, had what, 90 two plus wins every single year um was actually kind of glitchy too so i hope you guys enjoyed the wheel of potentials rebuild if you did hit the like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content and as always in the comment section let me know future video ideas for mlb the show do you guys want to see diamond dynasty do you guys want to see more rebuilds do you guys want to see more franchise what do you guys want to see um that's that's basically what i want to bring to you guys i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll catch you all in the next video peace